Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to Quick Slants, presented by Nissan with Barrett Brooks. I'm Derek Gunn. Our Reuben Frank uh, wrote in detail how Howie Roseman achieved one of his main goals this offseason, which was to get younger. Uh, last year, the Eagles were considered the third oldest team in the league. As it stands right now, they are the ninth youngest team in the league. So what grade would you give Howie? Well, they got a lot younger and hopefully a lot faster at the wide receiver position by way of the draft. They brought in a good young D-tackle in Javon Hargrave. So how he did achieve that goal in getting younger. Are they much better? That remains to be seen, but because Howie was true to his word, I'm going to give him a solid B as it stands right now. You know what? I read Ruben Frank's article and I love what he had to say. I mean, you look at it, look at how he did. He went out there and got younger and he got faster. And I was truly a fan of that. But also look at this. If I was to give him a grade, I'd have to give him a C plus. Simply because I think of in my mindset, I think that retooling and rebuilding are both different aspects of how you enter into free agency and in the draft. If you look at it, on the defensive side of the ball, they retooled. They went out and got Darius Slay. I mean, big time shutdown corner. They needed that in the worst way. They got Javon Hargrave. A really good one technique that can press the pocket. He can make some things happen. Will Parks is a guy that you need to be talking about because he's going to play a lot in this th uh, big three system that sports like to run with Big Nickel. Um, you look at also Roby Coleman. He's a guy that's very good in the slot. They have some really key guys that can come in and play right now. But then, you know, that's retooling. But you look at the offensive side of the ball. There's only really one or two guys that are really going to make an instant impact. Our, of course, Marquise Goodwin, the speed we needed, veteran leadership. He's going to be a guy that's going to contribute. We have to have Jalen Reger. He's going to have to re, uh, go out and, and, and produce. You know, he's the first round pick. But after that, it's like we're rebuilding because we have young guys that aren't necessarily in the mix and playing right now. Of course, our second round pick, Jalen Hurts, he's not going to play for a while, if any. Um, John Hightower, another fast receiver, got younger, got faster there. We got Quez Watkins, another fast receiver. He's going to play later on also. He's not going to play this year. So when you look at it, it's all about retooling or rebuilding. On the defensive side of the ball, we retool. We stocked up. We're ready to go out there and win. On the offensive side of the ball, I think we got a little longer as far as projection of guys that are going to play. The NFL sent out a memo to all 32 teams this week to prepare to open team facilities. Some states remain in lockdown while others have already begun to open up. So should the NFL tell all teams to keep their facilities closed until all can get back in them at the same time? For me, the answer would have to be yes, except... Uh, those teams that have new head coaches and new coaching staffs should be allowed to open up at least a week before the other teams. But so everybody is back on equal playing terms uh, in terms of practicing and getting new players um, acclimated to the playbooks and schemes and so on and so forth, just as they have done in the past when new head coaching staffs were allowed to begin practicing a week before the other teams. Uh, I think they should follow that same guideline. d -Gun. When you look at the NFL and why they sent this memo out, is they don't want any team to have an unfair advantage going into this season. If you look at it, you go out there and you allow teams to go in if your facilities are open. And what about the states that are not allowing their facilities to be opened up? If you look at the Eagles, as a matter of fact, Eagles and the Steelers, Pennsylvania is not opened up. So now those players can get in and get some, build some camaraderie with players that you know they haven't met before. Get in there with the coaching staff, learning what the coaches are, learning who they are, what is being asked of them, getting in the playbook around them, and really getting a heads up on the teams that can't do it. I mean, that's an unfair advantage. I mean, a team like Cleveland, in which their state has opened up, for the most part, they can go in and get some coaching from the, from the coaching staff. They can walk in and build camaraderie with other players. That's big, especially for a rookie. So now the states like Pennsylvania, where the Eagles and Steelers are, they won't get that advantage. They won't allow their players to come in and really be around each other. And that's where you build the team building concept. You learn the culture of the teams. It's unfair to allow most teams to do it. It's not like basketball. I think they're starting to open up now. But, you know, it really puts you in a bad predicament when you're a team that's not opened up. And I don't think that other teams need to get that competitive advantage on the Eagles.
All right, we continue our better or worse series as we look at the running back situation. Uh, the Eagles let Jordan Howard go in free agency. Of course, he's now with the Miami Dolphins, but they still have Miles Sanders, Boston Scott, Corey Clement, Elijah Holyfield, and a couple of undrafted rookies as well. So is the backfield better or worse? I'm going to say it's better. When Jordan Howard was healthy, he was averaging four yards a carry. But as that saying goes, one man's injury is another man's opportunity. When Howard went down, Miles Sanders stepped up. He averaged 4.6 yards per carry and over 10 yards per reception. And then Boston Scott, who was a mere afterthought for a long time, he stepped up into the number two role. He averaged four yards a carry and had five rushing touchdowns. And we all know what Corey Clement can do when he is healthy. Uh, I like this nice trio of backs are very versatile all three dangerous in terms of running the football and catching the ball as well and most importantly all three running backs are 25 years of age or younger better or worse in the running back room this is tough because if you look at it jordan howard was a good player for the eagles he set the tone on physical play at the running back position he pounded the rocket between the tackles and the offensive lineman you love running backs like that he also taught Miles Sanders how to run the ball north and south as opposed to running sideline to sideline like he was running it like he ran in college. So, did they get better or worse? At this point, I, I, I want to lean towards better simply because it's another year in the Miles Sanders um, belt. He's maturing in this offense. He got better and better as the season progressed. He became more of a, of a threat in the passing game. Miles Sanders is a better player, so I'm tending to lean towards their better. But how can I say that when when Jordan Howard is the one that got him to this place? So this is really a, a bad predicament for me because I like Howard's game, but also Lord, look, like the fact that, you know, look at Miles Sander and his progression. The sky's the limit for this kid. And I also think that the head coach, Doug Peterson, wants to have an every down back as opposed to running back by committee. He just didn't have that back. Well, now he has that back. He has that impact player he's been looking for. Miles Sanders will definitely be a better player than he was last year. So I'm going to say better this time simply because this is another year in the Miles Sanders belt, and he's become a, a more physical player and a finesse player outside when he's catching the ball uh, on screen plays and things of that nature. So I'm going to go better this time with Miles Sanders. And finally, taking another look at one of the Eagles' opponents for 2020, the defending NFC champion San Francisco 49ers. Uh, the Eagles have a Sunday night encounter with them out in the Bay Area. Uh, are the 49ers poised to be an elite team again, and how do the Eagles uh, measure up against them? Well, let's take a look at what the 49ers have done this offseason. Um, they let wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders go by way of free agency. Uh, they traded defensive tackle to Forrest Buckner to Indianapolis, but they added wide receiver Travis Benjamin. They were smart enough to re-sign defensive tackle Ark Armstead and safety Jimmy Ward. Uh, they also traded for former Redskins Pro Bowl tackle Trent Williams. Then you add in what they did in the draft. They had two first-round picks. With the first pick, they picked up defensive tackle Javon Kinlaw from South Carolina. And with that second pick, they took wide receiver Brandon Ayuk from Arizona State. Now, the 49ers come back basically intact. Um, they were the number two defense in the National Football League last year, the number four offense. They are rugged on both sides of the football and solid in the trenches, linebacker, secondary, offensive line, one of the best tight ends in the game and a nice nucleus of running backs and some pretty good wideouts as well. Um, so the Eagles have to go there to face the 49ers. Can the Eagles beat San Francisco? If everything falls into place, the Eagles have to play a near flawless game for that to happen. But because that game is in the Bay Area, I don't like the Birds' chances out West. Ooh, I can't wait for the season to start. Week four in San Fran, the 49ers versus the Eagles. It's going to be a great game. And, you know, if you look at how you evaluate your team um, going into the season, it's not until after your fourth game do you really get an identity on what you are as a team. And the fourth game, they're going to have a very physical 49ers team. And I want to see where this offense, how it's developed with the new speed they've added. Uh, you know, hopefully D. Jackson will be back. And if he's back, it puts us in a better predicament to win because now you pick your poison as a defense. Do you stop this high power passing game with Goodwin, who's going to want to play and ball out against his former team? And then you also have D. Jackson, who's speed for days. He can take the top off. 
but we also have a good running back in Miles Sanders. So I, I can't wait to get in there and see this team and where they progress and what identity they will have going into the season. It's another year under Carson Wentz's belt where he'll take the reins and he'll be a better quarterback this year simply because he did some things in the latter part of last year that really made him a special player. He took practice squad guys and made them players and willed them into the playoffs. So if you look at it, week four will tell a lot to me on this team's identity and how far they go through the season and if they get to the playoffs. Make me a believer. Turn my prediction around. At this point, I'm saying nine to seven. If they can go in and beat this San Fran team, the sky's the limit for this team because then they'll have an identity who they are and they ain't just about beat anybody. We're talking about the, the, the reigning NFC champs represented us in the Super Bowl. We'll see, but I can't wait to see how the Eagles compete in week four against the 49ers. All right, that's a wrap for this edition of Quick Slants presented by Nissan for Barrett Brooks. I'm Derek Gunn. Hopefully you get out there and enjoy some of this warm weather this weekend, but most importantly, stay safe, everybody.